Greetings, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back to the uh, Transforming Assessment webinar series. We're already in August. Um, today's session is on a 3D virtual business simulation and looking at the experiential learning in first year accounting. Present, presenter today is uh, Associate Professor Julie Walker from the University of Queensland Business School. So, Julie, would you like to begin, please? Oh, thank you very much, Matthew. And um, I'd just like to welcome everybody and, and say that I'm delighted to be part of the um, Transforming Assessment series. Uh, Today I wanted to talk about the 3D virtual business simulation uh, that we're using at the moment. We used it in first semester um, 2015 in our first year accounting course at, at UQ. Um, this is um, part of a, a blended learning project for first year business courses here at the University of Queensland and other members of the project team are uh, Robin Parry who's um, also joining us today, she's in the room with me, and Anthea uh, Leggett from the um, Institute for Teaching and Learning Innovation at the University of Queensland. Um, uh, all being well, uh, we will get a look inside the virtual world today. I've, I have got some um, video of uh, the interior of the virtual world while, while it's live, so hopefully we'll all get a look at it uh, later on. Um, but for the moment I just wanted to talk about the, the course, the subject and the, and the program and what led us to um, implementing this uh, virtual business simulation for experiential learning in, in first year accounting. Um, okay, so uh, I'll just uh, uh, go to the introduction slide where you can see the members of the, the team, myself, Robin Parry and, and Anthea Leggett. Um, and on the, um, the first slide there, there's uh, just a capture from inside the, the, the virtual world uh, to give everyone a feel for, for what it looks like inside that, that 3D virtual world. Uh, okay, so the, the course, the, the course is a very large undergraduate course and by large I mean it has 800 to 1,000 students in a semester um, enrolled in it. Uh, it's a first year course. In first semester this, this year, 2015, we had uh, 927 students. The, uh, the course is a, a core course for three big undergraduate business programs here at the University of Queensland, um, uh, Commerce Business Management and Tourism and, and Hospitality Management are those uh, large undergraduate business programs. It's also a, an elective course for many students from science, law, engineering and arts. Uh, a lot of uh, students from uh, a variety of disciplines uh, enrol in an, an intro accounting course like this one as um, a, a good option for them as they uh, start their undergraduate career. So we have a diverse cohort from all different types of programs and disciplines. We also have about 35% international students. Um, so it's really quite a challenging group of, of students to try and manage um, and particularly to try and um, innovate in a course of, of, of this size. Uh, the course title is Accounting for Decision Making. It's um, not intended as a technical debit credit course. There's really not too much point in uh, you know, labouring through the debit credit accounting cycle when we have a, a diverse um, cohort such as we have in, in this particular course. Um, and um, we, we've got to, sort of got to realise that only about um, 300 of the 900 odd students, uh, if that, will go on to be accounting majors. So the focus of the course is on accounting information to support business decision making, not account preparation. Okay, now the previous learning approach up until first semester of this year was um, a traditional weekly face-to-face -face lecture and tutorial. So um, every student would go to a two-hour lecture um, one week and a two-hour tutorial uh, once a week. These were very much um, conventional sort of classes, very much a passive learning style where students would um, attend the lecture in a group of say 300 students. We had um, three lectures a week in, in the course, um, the first lecture and then two repeats to accommodate the 900 odd students we had enrolled. Tutorials are much smaller groups, there'd be about 25 students in each tutorial. 
Um, and, and these were run in a very conventional way where we had a, a didactic sort of approach where um, the tutor stood out the front basically giving, giving the solutions to the tutorial group. Um, the assessment in course until 2015 consisted of two invigilated written exams as well as a company analysis and valuation uh, group project. So very traditional sort of intro accounting um, undergraduate course in terms of how it was delivered and the type of assessment that was being used in the course. And I think as Robin has just said, um, you know, it's, it's a big horse to get some idea of the scale of the course. We had um, 43 separate tutorial groups each week um, to accommodate the 900 odd students uh, that we had enrolled. Uh, now, last year we you know, had a good look at the course because there seemed to be some issues happening there with um, student satisfaction with the course as well as the achievement of learning outcomes um, by students in terms of the academic uh, content. So when we reviewed the course we had a look at um, student surveys generally, the CCATs, um, which are our UQ instruments for um, surveying students. Um, Overall, students were satisfied with the course in terms of the, 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 the level of service they were, they were getting from it, but there seemed to be very low engagement levels. Um, most students felt that the course was not um, intellectually stimulating, um, and very few students found the course content interesting or, or relevant. Um, and that surprised me greatly um, because these are for the most part business students so you would think that they would um, find an accounting course relevant to their future careers but many of them were, were very disengaged from the course content. So we surveyed students quite um, extensively last year, late last year and found that they really weren't enjoying the course or taking up the right levels of knowledge and achieving the sort of outcomes that we would like to see um, from undergrads. Um, in addition, um, we, uh, Robin and myself um, worked on a threshold project to try and identify thresholds in introductory accounting, threshold concepts um, for students approaching accounting for the first time. So we analysed a number of um, exam scripts and found that generally many of the students were approaching accounting problems that are very superficial um, and, and fragmented type of way. Um, they were rote learning, fragmented answers to accounting questions and just reproducing those um, for, for the final exam. Um, and this occurred even after repetitive in-class rehearsal of similar accounting problems. So even though we would run through um, uh, applications of accounting knowledge repetitively to prepare students for, for the final exam, they, they didn't seem to be able to see the big picture and their answers would, generally speaking, be fragmented and incomplete. Uh, in other words, they weren't getting the type and level of accounting knowledge that we, we had hoped that they would achieve um, in this first accounting course. So last year a decision was made to introduce an active learning approach to the course so that we could improve learning outcomes um, for the students. Uh, now active learning we simply mean by that uh, any activity which involves students in doing things and thinking about the things that they are doing. Um, and I've got that Bungle and Ison citation there. Uh, really we were just trying to change it around so that students were far more focused on learning what they needed. So it was like trying to get to a student-centred approach um, and making students jump in the deep end with accounting and actually actively learn it instead of sitting passively in a lecture theatre with it being dished up by the lecturer down the front of the room. So coming to 2015, um, we rebuilt the entire course. So every single element of the course was changed in 2015. All of the um, materials was rewritten, all of the assessment was rewritten uh, for 2015. Um, and a, a web-based or digital simulation was an important component of that active learning approach. 
um, other changes that we made to the um, to the course included the introduction of a collaborative tutorial program, um, as well as the introduction of online tests to replace the previous written mid-semester exam. So we changed everything, um, not just um, the, the virtual world, we didn't just introduce the virtual world, all the other aspects of the course, um, the lectures, tutorials, all of that was reviewed, um, streamlined, uh, updated and if necessary rewritten completely um, to support the active learning approach for, for the course. Also we needed to align the curriculum with the use of the um, 3D simulation. Uh, to make sure that it wasn't just sort of bolted on to a, a, a pre-existing uh, course in pedagogy. Okay, so coming to the 3D virtual business world, uh, where did this come from? Well, it wasn't an off-the-shelf um, simulation. Uh, we collaborated with um, an organisation called International Education Services or IES, which had developed a 3D virtual business world for use in their Foundation Year program for international students. Um, the Foundation Year program is a um, uh, university preparation program. Um, it's been run by IES, um, you know, for, for many years in their um, at their Brisbane campus. Now they had already developed a 3D virtual business world that they used in their Foundation Year program. Uh, primarily to teach business management and they use that as a classroom resource. So their students in their foundation year would go into the 3D virtual business world um, all together in the classroom um, and the, 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 the teachers, the academic staff as well as the tech staff would be in the classroom, physically in the classroom with them. Now we collaborated with IES to develop and adapt that virtual world for use um, in our first year accounting course. We wanted an experiential learning resource um, and we needed to adapt it and develop it further so it was appropriate um, for first year accounting at university level. So that is what became the VBE or the Virtual Business Enterprise. Um, so what is this VBE or, or virtual business world? Well what it actually consists of is a small virtual economy consisting of 20 student operated businesses uh, supported by a central bank. Um, there's an associated VBE control panel that allows users or players to control a range of things, um, for example sending prices for products. Now the idea here is that um, each of the 20 virtual businesses within the virtual world uh, is operated by a student group across a number of in-world trading sessions during the semester. Um, so basically each student group is allocated to a business um, and they run that business in the virtual world um, during the semester. Uh, in addition to the VB world itself um, and the control panel, a VB communications app and a VB dashboard were developed. Uh, the VB app allows students to communicate with others in their virtual business and those in competing businesses in their instance of the VBE. So it's like a very scaled down version of something like MSN, it's a communication um, application. The, the VBE app is available continuously um, and so it allows some players to continue to plan and organise their business between trading sessions. Um, and so it was just a way for students in their groups to talk to one another um, both inside the world and outside the world. Now I've just got a screenshot of the VBE app um, to show just to show you what that looks like. Um, and um, as, as Robin is saying in the chat, students will just download this application to um, their device, their mobile phone um, or their tablet device. And you can see here on the, um, on the, the screenshot 
uh, you can see on the um, right hand side um, a boardroom which allows um, students to talk to other members of their group, um, broadcaster which allows students to broadcast out to other players in their in-world session. Um, reports could be generated from the, the VBE app, that is financial statements. Um, there was a logbook that could be um, entered from the VBE app and of course there's a logout function there. Um, in addition to the VBE app, there's also a VBE dashboard um, and that's a website where students can undertake a number of tasks related to their VBE activity. Um, so for example, they could go in and select a job within their virtual business um, and, and this enabled them to join a group at the start of the exercise. Uh, they could view financial reports generated after each trading session um, and they could manage their user profile um, uh, via the, the, the VBE dashboard. Um, so that dashboard acted like sort of a control centre for them um, and that was a, pretty important to the whole exercise because this is an accounting course and the VBE dashboard is where they would find um, the financial reports generated from the organic data that was, was, was created um, from each trading, trading session. Um, so, as I was saying, to access VBE, students download the VBE Viewer and the VBE App. The VBE Viewer is sort of a, a browser type application. Um, it um, wasn't too problematic for, for anyone really to, to download. We had very few issues um, from students in terms of not being able to download or not having appropriate devices um, on which to, to download. Uh, out of um, 927 students, we had one student who didn't have a smartphone. Everybody else had a smartphone or a, an iPad or a, a smart tablet. So the, the hardware was, was not an issue, which surprised me a little, but um, the, the students didn't blink twice at being asked to, to download um, this software. The viewer was also installed on, on hundreds of library computers across campus. Um, so that students could access it from, from campus. Um, and this meant that students could enter their scheduled trading session um, from any location with access to the viewer, um, either on campus um, or at home if they wanted to. So I guess best to start talking about what happens in a um, a VBE trading session having run through you know, um, the basics on how students actually enter um, that virtual world. Well, the VBE is, um, it uses avatars. Um, so each avatar performs pre-planned and agreed tasks as well as making in-session decisions on running their business. So the types of decisions that they would be making in world would be um, whether to purchase inventory or not, um, the pricing of products was a key decision that they were making in world uh, because they would have to sell in order to, to succeed in, in financial terms within the VBE. Um, they'd also have to make decisions about advertising. Uh, they could purchase advertising and upload and you know, they could create their own advertisements for their business and then upload those advertisements to the virtual world. Um, uh, and they did definitely have to trade while they were in there. Um, now the idea of the avatar was to hopefully encourage students to identify more with what they were doing inside that virtual economy. Um, that seemed to be quite effective. It's um, quite a sim-like world um, and many of the students were very familiar with that type of, of, of sim world. Uh, so that was, that was quite effective. Um, as I said at the start, there are only 20 businesses um, in the virtual economy. So this means that at any um, one point in time, there's only 20 avatars um, in world together. Um, uh, so that avatar executes their team's plans um, and competes with the other avatars in world. Each trading session um, ran for 50 minutes 
and we had six weeks of training. So um, each student group would go in um, once a week for six weeks to trade in that virtual economy running their virtual, um, their virtual business. Um, because it's avatar driven, only one student could actually control the avatar at any one point in time. What did the other students do in the, in the student group? Well, they would be operating the, the control panel, so they would be, say, changing prices as the group agreed to, say, discount their, um, uh, their goods. Um, and they'd be communicating uh, with other avatars, other students also in world with them. Um, now they didn't have to be all together in the one location to be doing this. So if, you, if we had four students in each group, um, one could be sitting in one location controlling the avatar and the others could be in completely different locations uh, using the broadcaster app um, and, and, and monitoring what's going on um, uh, through the, the VBE dashboard. Now at the end of every session, financial statements were generated for each virtual business um, and these were downloaded by students and used to monitor their progress and formulate plans for the next trading session. Um, and those financial statements uh, from, from the final trading session, the sixth trading session, were used as the basis for the financial plan section of the business plan assignment which is linked to the, um, the virtual business enterprise exercise. Um, okay, now I've got some stills coming up of the, the virtual business enterprise. I'll just take me away um, so we can just focus on what the, the VBE looks like. This is an external view. The VBE is actually a shopping mall um, and uh, uh, this is just the outside of the, the shopping mall and you can see um, that there's some advertising for sale um, that students can go in and, um, and buy. They can purchase that advertising and upload um, their choice of design. Many of them did so um, across the semester. Um, this is a game screen. Um, so this is what a student would see. This is, uh, you can see the avatar there um, in the centre of the screen. On the top uh, left hand corner you can see um, their attributes there, health, satisfaction and relationships um, and also a running balance of how much cash, how much money um, the business has. Um, now students must go in and trade. They can't just enter the virtual world and sort of sit around. That they actually must be very active while they're in there. Um, and they need to trade. They need to um, sell goods as well as buy goods. If they don't purchase the right range of goods, then their health and satisfaction and relationship levels start to fall. Um, now once they start to fall, their products are, are, are affected in the, in the longer run, which means that um, when they sell their products, if their health is very low, other avatars may get sick from um, uh, using those products, from consuming those products. So it's important that their attributes were kept at fairly high levels across, uh, across the trading session. It's quite possible for the avatars to, to die, and we had a couple, couple of avatars die um, uh, across the semester. Um, so I should tell you now that there's a controller in, in world with them. We had an academic staff member acting as a controller in world for every session um, and uh, that controller would rejuvenate any dead avatars because um, we couldn't just let them die. We'd sort of rejuvenate them and tell them what they had to do to keep themselves um, uh, healthy. Um, so does no money equal death? Well, no, not necessarily. It's really the attributes that um, that that um, that determine whether or not the avatar would die. Um, but generally speaking, you had a reasonably healthy um, money balance um, that was associated with a good balance of attributes as well. Um, at the same time, 
as they were in world, they could of course chat and you can see um, left bottom corner is a little chat box. Um, and um, the controller, if, if he or she wanted to, could just give the business the money. And we did that in a few cases where um, unexpected things happened, so we would just gift that particular virtual business a um, hundred virtual dollars, and um, that would rejuvenate them. Um, and I mean, the idea here is that we want students to take risks and make some decisions um, in, in this business um, space, because after all, that's what the um, course is about: is making business decisions using accounting information. Um, uh, but of course, we don't want the cost to be too high. So the highest possible cost that can happen here is that your avatar dies. But that's, that's no big deal. It's not going to affect your assessment. It's not going to affect your grade. Uh, we're going to rejuvenate you, um, get you back on your feet, and tell you what to do to avoid um, having your avatar die again down track. So it's not a matter of, you know, if you're dead, you're out for the rest of the semester. Um, the next slide just shows an avatar. This is one of the female avatars um, buying some inventory. Um, so you can see this is uh, Debella's Coffee. That's the name of the business. Um, they have to go to the where they have to physically go to the warehouse, the avatar, um, to to purchase inventory. Um, and you can see the female avatar there is about to buy some inventory for the business Debella's Coffee. Um, and there's different types of inventory that they can buy. Um, there's a range of three different types of products, uh, different sorts of quality, different prices. And so students have to make decisions about what type of inventory they're going to buy um, and then, of course, what their selling price is going to be. Um, so um, students can also obtain a loan. Um, and many of them did, so they'd go to the bank, the Australian bank that exists within the virtual world. Um, and you can see on this slide that there's, there were three loan plans um, uh, and the interest rate, say 0.75, 6.25%, etc. So students could decide how much they wanted to borrow and which of those interest rates they were prepared to pay. Um, and they would, of course, have to pay back those loans um, as, as part of the um, part of the game in the virtual world. And of course those loans would flow through and appear in the financial statements um, along with the interest. Uh, this is just a, a close up screenshot of the attributes. Um, students had to balance things out. They had to participate um, in the entire virtual economy. Um, not just buy cheap goods, not just um, ignore the fact that they have employees and, and so on. They had to um, trade and buy a range of goods and services. They needed to advertise to make sure that their, um, their business was out there in the virtual economy and that, that other avatars knew about um, their products and their prices. Um, and just like in the real world, if they didn't pay any attention to their business or to their employees, the business ultimately failed. Um, so there's also in world a law court um, for handling any in world disputes. Um, now it might happen that a business's um, attributes fell so low that the products that it sold were actually um, poisoning other businesses, um, like you know buying a food item in in the real world that's um, stale and makes you sick. Um, so that might go to the law court for uh, adjudication. Um, similarly, any, any um, fair work sort of issues would be taken to the law court um, and an adjudication would be made. It was really the controller who would make the decision on any disputes sent to the law court. And you can see there's that female avatar there um, using the law court. Okay, um, now I've got a little video on YouTube of inside the VBE. So what I'll do is just, there it is, 
if you could just click, click on that link. Uh, hi folks, just to let you know, the link inside the text chat is clickable. The one on the slide, unfortunately, is not. So the general plan will be for people to click that, watch the video, and we'll be back in the 4 minutes and 34 seconds. Yeah. So hopefully you're able to see um, the virtual world and you can see that it's actually a shopping mall. And uh, uh, there's the escalator. So each business, each virtual business has a place in the shopping mall. Um, and we found that um, the avatars like to gather at the bottom of the escalators uh, to do some horse trading. Um, so they would, you know, be asking each other to 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 buy goods from their business, and they'd be, you know, offering discounts, sending prices down there, and um, chatting. You can see that they're they're talking to one another. This is the, um, you know, they'll go to the warehouse um, that I showed you was still of earlier to purchase inventory for sale. Um, and, the, you know, the price has changed as the inventory's taken up, um, the prices are refreshed. It's a little bit slower than um, than it actually worked in 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 real life. I think making the the movie seemed to slow things down a little. It was actually a lot faster than this. Um, and uh, when we had you know when you have twenty avatars in there all rocking around the virtual world, um, it, it's just pretty amazing how fast everything is is moving. It's actually difficult to keep up with it all. They they rock around for the entire fifty minutes. Um, trading frantically, actually. Um, and you can see quite a few of them in there. They're doing a lot of talking, um, horse trading, discounting. We, you can't see the controller there. We, we ended up holding, hiding the controller away um, because too many of the students would try and um, talk to the controller instead of getting on with trading. So students here, you can see, have to make decisions continuously through their 50 minutes. Whoever's driving that avatar has to carry out the planned activities that the group, you know, decided on as a group, um, and then they have to anchor and adjust because while they're in world, things are happening constantly. Um, so they have to make decisions on the hop, on the fly, while, while they're in world. So two elements here do what the group has, has planned for them to do, um, but then also um, make decisions on the spot within the virtual world while the trading session's live. Um, you can see that's one of the businesses there, Foodies. You know, to buy items, so you have, actually have to visit the business and purchase the items.
Okay. Thanks, Scott. Uh-huh. Oh, um, you see that post I will see just I'll, um, I'll go on to the next slide then. Um, I think most of us should have finished by now. I, I, I'm aware that people really wanted to see, would want to see what that virtual world looks like, um, and, and, and hence the movie. Um, I realise it's not the same as actually being in there, um, but as, and as I was saying, it's a lot more fast moving and exciting when you're actually driving an avatar um, and, and the, the virtual world is open and live. Um, okay, so what was the assessment um, that this VBE exercise was linked to? Well, I need to say first of all that the the exercise was run alongside lectures and tutorials. Um, it didn't replace conventional classes, so there were um, 13 lectures and 12 tutorials across the semester. The VBE sat next to it as an experiential learning resource. The related assessment um, that the VBE exercise led to was a business plan um, assignment, uh, which each student group prepared for their virtual business. So basically, each student group was asked to prepare a business plan to support a loan application for their business going forward, um, with a focus on the next 12 months. Uh, so it was a, a short-term uh, sort of view rather than a long-term view. Um, success in the VBE also required you know, good teamwork by the student groups. If they didn't get together during the week and plan their activities, uh, things tended to unwind a little inside the training session itself. Um, so most students soon learned that they needed to get very organised and communicate and, and operate as a team um, to, to be successful in that virtual business world. Um, to, to help with this, we asked students to complete an individual online reflective journal about their planning and execution for each trading session. And it really was fantastic to see how much planning so many of the students did. Um, they really did start to think about how they were going to go into that world and succeed. Um, and um, and asking them to reflect on it emphasised to the students just what they were doing and how much they were learning through the exercise. Um, now, the logistics of the exercise, well, as I said earlier, over 900 students enrolled in first semester. Um, this meant we had 12 weekly trading sessions each week for six weeks. Um, and we had to support all this, so all students attended an induction session for the VBE uh, prior to the first trading session. Uh, so we had to organise um, uh, induction, you know, introduction to this for um, both the students as well as staff who were also unfamiliar with the um, VBE. Uh, now, I've got a really short video of the VBE induction session. If um, you know, I was going to play if we had time, and I think we do. Um, so we might just have a quick look at that and then come back in 57 seconds. doing here today is we're running a training and information session for the Virtual Business Enterprise, which is a 3D virtual world uh, that we're going to use as an experiential learning resource in our first year accounting course. Students go in and in groups of four run a virtual business across six weeks of the semester. So they're actually experiencing having to make decisions like how much inventory should I buy? How should I price my products or services? How much should I be selling? What should my overheads be like? Should I be looking after my employees? Uh, all those sorts of decisions that they, they, they make and then experience the consequences of those decisions um, through the financial statements generated within the virtual world. Um, okay, I'm, I'm back. Um, okay, thanks everyone, finished the induction video. Uh, I, I guess I, I wanted to show you that because the induction sessions themselves really generated a lot of buzz around 
you know, the students, but also around staff. Um, you know, because we asked, you know, we just had an open invitation to academic staff um, to go along to those sessions just as observers, and, and many of them did. And it was just fantastic to see how much sort of excitement from students and staff was focused ar around this exercise. It really seemed to engage everyone. Um, and, you know, I was, so I was just so pleased to see that going on. That was just great. Um, so um, I see we have about 15 minutes left, so I just want to try and wind up and maybe talk about um, observations from semester one and, and lessons learned. So what was the outcome from our semester one running of the VBE? Well, um, certainly there was observable enhanced student engagement with the course material. Um, students really did seem to dive into this active learning mode. They got their hands dirty right from week one using accounting information um, and making decisions, having to make decisions using accounting and other financial information. Um, there were markedly improved skills by students in using and interpreting financial statements, um, improved decision making skills, um, much improved teamwork skills because the groups really did have to work together um, tightly and effectively to do well in this exercise. And, and look, overall we found that students were incredibly receptive to change. They wanted us to change things. Um, and while they didn't always appreciate some of the things that we did, um, they, they did very much appreciate that we were trying to enhance their experience and enhance their, their, their learning outcomes. Um, so I'd just like to, to finish with a two minute um, interview with a student. Um, this, is, um, this was a very good student from, from semester one, but nonetheless fairly typical sort of response. Um, and I just thought I'd let you see what sort of things students were saying um, about the VBE and about the course in first semester. So Ben, if I was a new student coming to do accounting 101, uh, I heard there's a VBE assessment. I was wondering if you could tell me something about that. Yeah, it's, well it's a new um, virtual business enterprise. So basically what you do is you start your own business, but it's all online. So how it's run is that you get an avatar and you get to go into a virtual world and you get to choose like a cafe, a restaurant, some bakery and stuff like that and you just run your own business from the start to the finish. So you're given, you've got to do financial figures and all that stuff which you have to do in real life. So it's a really good you know, learning curve and it's well worth it. So Ben, is it an individual or a group assignment? And if, it's, if it is the group assignment, what does that entail? Well it's actually, yeah, a group assignment. So you in a group of four people, right? So everyone does an equal amount. So each of you go into the avatar, each of you make decisions, and it works like a team. So everyone has to have an input. It's not one singular person. And it's a good type of group assignment too because it's not, you know, four individual people just come together. You actually, everyone gets a proper input and everyone's ideas get discussed. So that's what we do throughout the BBA. So Ben, I was just wondering, uh, how did the group dynamics function? Well, it was a bit better than you know the usual group assignment. It's not for individuals, it was actually a proper group. So of course, like every group, there's some people who want to, you know, do everything or do things slightly different and there will be disagreements, yeah, we all know that. But the important thing is everything got discussed and you're actually a proper group rather than individuals in the team. So the best thing about that is that, say, um, if one person had an idea about pricing, right, he wanted to make it expensive and use one strategy, and one person had an idea about, you know, using the cheap strategy, the price leader one, yeah. Well, so one. There, there, there you go. And, um, um, they'll come together some, um, in agreement. Student testament to... Um, so would you say that the VBE... Uh, how they found the, 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 the VBE, they, they really were quite, as a group, they really were, were quite engaged by the whole exercise. Um, did they love it? Did they all love it? Um, well, no. There were some technical problems during the semester. Um, a few of the sessions failed and some individuals had um, difficulties in navigating their, their avatar. Um, generally, the student feedback uh, around the VBE was very positive and consistent with the video, the YouTube video um, that I just ran. Um, but 
the students are very critical. You know, they're quite, they seem quite sophisticated in a, you know, a technological way. Um, and I guess we have um, many students who are, you know, very familiar with playing Sims or playing, you know, role-playing games and, and, and so on. Um, so quite a few of them were critical, particularly if they experienced a technical problem with the VBE itself. Um, they didn't like that at all if their session didn't run. Um, and, and were very unhappy if that if that generally occurred. Um, but you know, there were no winners or losers in the game itself. Winning or doing well in the, within the virtual world was not at all linked to the assessment. Um, so you know, there were no major repercussions for students' grades if the session fell over, for example. Um, so generally student feedback was positive, but some of them were not very happy with the technology, especially if the technology failed them on, on more than one occasion. Um, so lessons learned, what did we do? Um, well, based on the semester one experience, um, we're going to run fewer trading sessions this semester. Uh, we're going to tweak the financial statements so that they're better aligned with the in-world activity. And we've also, in collaboration with IES, um, uh, resolved many of the technical issues um, that we experienced um, in, in first semester. So we've already started second semester, things seem to be a little smoother and um, we found really that fewer trading sessions rather than more were, were, were necessary. Um, okay, I think we've got about 10 minutes for, for, for questions. And um, that's about all I've got to say about showing you what the VBE uh, looks like but very happy to answer questions in the remaining 10 minutes we've got here um, or, or after if you'd like to contact me with um, any questions you might have. Uh, hi Julie, um, William has got a question he's typed into the text chat if you want to uh, re respond to that. Oh okay, um, what staff training did you... Okay, what staff training did you need to conduct? Well, um, the staff went to the um, uh, um, for the, the they had to attend four induction sessions. Um, they had one training session for themselves. Um, there was no class time reserved for the sessions. They had to be um, um, organised out of class um, with with no sort of academic support. So. To summarise, we put staff through one training session and got them to attend a number of the induction sessions with the students. Um, it's quite intuitive, you know, the, the virtual world um, and, and none of the staff, we had a team of 12 tutors, um, all, all of them seemed to take to the exercise pretty easily. Um, also, do students do these only in structured class time? Uh, no. These were organised, the in-world sessions were organised outside of scheduled um, class time. Okay, um, a question here from Vicky. When, when I integrated the VBE into the curriculum, did the length of the weekly lecture and shoot change or was it still 2 plus 2 plus VBE? Yeah, it was still 2 plus 2 plus VBE. Um, we did, of course, you know, change the curriculum so that it, it spoke to the VBE exercise. Um, so for example, um, the textbook that was chosen for the course has the preparation of a business plan as sort of a theme in the textbook. Um, and there were a number of lectures where we used an example um, uh, virtual business um, and demonstrated budgeting techniques, for example. So students would have a better idea or would have an exemplar for what to do when they put together their own financial plan for their own virtual business. Oh, the, the fictional elements, yeah. Um, look, the the virtual world was used, as I said earlier, um, Ken, in answer to your, your question, um, by IES in their classroom. So it was used as a classroom tool and it was used to teach business management and, and also issues there like crisis management. So there's actually 
um, a disaster switch. So for example, we could have a tsunami come through the virtual world um, if we wanted to. Now we chose to switch those things off, but we couldn't get rid of all of these semi-fictional elements as, you, as you're calling them. Um, uh, you know, the idea was that we wanted to encourage students to actually participate in the world. We couldn't have the situation where they logged in and just let their avatar sit. Because, I mean, if you do that in the real world when you're running a business, your business will close. Um, and that's exactly what happens in the virtual world. If you send your avatar in and you don't pay attention to your business and trade with others, then your business goes bankrupt and your avatar dies. Um, okay, great question, Jackie. Um, no academic support for the trading sessions. Okay, um, yeah, it was to encourage independent, independent um, thinking and working independently. Um, students needed to get together as a team and make plans and then implement those plans. Um, uh, for example, use cost volume profit analysis to um, come up with their pricing. Um, they needed to be able to use some of the skills and knowledge from the course, from the lectures and so on, in that virtual world. Um, there wasn't a lot of point in having academic support in the virtual world with them. They were there to implement plans that they had made in the interim week. Um, and they didn't really have any problems with that. Um, and you know the curriculum was integrated with the VBE exercise, um, so it, it did seem to work quite well, and students did step up to the mark and did operate independently. Um, Trish, Think Education One, was there a substantial cost to purchase the sim? No. Um, I guess it's all right for me to say that IES are not, did not charge us anything for this. Um, this is a collaboration um, between IES and um, UQ Business School. Um, so, um, well, we haven't, you know, I, I haven't been sitting there writing code for the virtual world. Um, we have worked very closely with IES, with the technical people over there, um, to adapt the virtual world for our purposes. So there was no cost to the students and there was really no cost to us, to the school, other than the in-kind sort of costs in terms of our labour. Um, and indeed we started this process, this collaboration with IES, IES um, a, you know, a year before we actually implemented the VBE. Um, I think that answers your question, Vicky. What was the time frame for developing the VBE with the IES? It took us 12 months to get to the point where we could implement it. Um, and it's still under development. Um, there's lots of tweaks that we've asked for for second semester. Um, yeah. Uh, Greg, how did the lectures and sheets leverage the VBE experience of students? Um, well, we, we use the active learning approach in, in lectures and sheets as well. Um, so for example, the students start the semester with cost, volume, profit. Um, analysis and um, they're encouraged to use that in the VBE world for, for setting prices, for understanding what their, their break even point is, for example. Um, we also used a decision making model in the, um, in the lectures and, and that decision making model transferred to the virtual world. Was the virtual region on OpenSIM? Um, we we actually ran it, Scott, on the um, on the IES server. Um, so that was the arrangement we had with IES, is that they would run um, run the VBE on their own server. Um, 
um, Natalie, to answer your question, yes, it could be adapted for a macroeconomic sim. Um, and indeed, I think OES people have been talking to our um, economics um, school about doing that. Um, for example, the individual um, micro data for each business could be aggregated to generate macroeconomic data um, for the virtual virtual economy. And yeah, avatars could wear national costumes. It would be good fun. Okay, um, I think we're at six o'clock. Hi Julie, hello everybody, and um, thank you very much for that. Um, if anybody has got any final questions, please feel free.